not get crazy. <laughs> Most everyone's mad. <laughs>cast i hope you all had a wonderful weekend especially you americans out there considering that you all had your thanksgiving yeah! oh well <laughs> that certainly answers the question uh thank you gorillas fan 1992 uh so uh i hope you all had a wonderful time uh for me well i have to say that uh today has been uh yeah! honestly oh wow even more subscriptions thank you ks19 right over there uh, but I, I just need to say that today has been uh, pretty mixed for me. It's been going well, but today I have to go and uh, quickly discuss with you guys in regards to something specifically in my videos. Now, if you guys have seen some of my recent reviews, including the uh, My Father's Dragon review and the Strange World review, you may have noticed that they were both sponsored by yeah! established titles. Oh, fudge. Everybody is subscribing all at once. Now there is a hype train coming. Well, okay, if we're going to have a hype train, then keep it going, guys. Thank you, Meta Ralph. <laughs> wow, we really are starting the fun. But um, anyways, back to what I was talking about. Um, yes, uh, so those two recent reviews I made, they were sponsored by established titles. But recently, it looks like the company has been into a lot of major controversy where it's been gathering a pretty bad reputation where some people are calling them a scam. Now, I haven't fully gotten into the whole situation to know what was going on. I was pretty busy myself with uh, working on reviews and other videos and being with my family and stuff like that. Uh, but just before starting this, I actually did receive an email from the ad agency who connected me with established titles to go and say that effective immediately, I got to stop uh, making ads for established titles because believe it or not, I actually had yeah! a multi-part. Oh, fudge. Even more subscriptions. Thank you, Jonathan. Okay. Wow. All time record shattered. Yo, oh boy. This is actually so much fun. But um, yeah, as I was saying, effective immediately, uh, I can no longer go and make more ads for established titles because of that bad reputation or until they can go and really sort things out. And beforehand, I had like a multi-part deal where I was supposed to go and uh, actually have uh, like a six-part deal where up until Christmas, I would like my reviews would have uh, an established title plug. But it looks like that's not going to be happening and for now, like, I, I could give it to you right after the podcast. I need to go and contact them in regards to uh, the videos that have the ads, and hopefully I will still get paid. Because if not, and I won't get any money for them, well, uh, pardon my language, but fuck you guys for, taint for tainting my uh, reviews, honestly. Like, they didn't need any ads, and uh, now it seems to be pretty much ruined with a shady plug apparently so that honestly really sucks so uh it's just something i want to go and quickly uh address to you all and again after this i'll try to go and uh handle the situation see what is going on and in order to get more answers but yes um this is just to let you know now that i am aware of the situation with established titles and there will be no more ads effective immediately of established titles in my videos until we know what the fridge is even going on Okay, but anyways, with that said, you guys are not here. You you guys are not here to hear me talk about uh, established titles. We are here for the show. So I would like to go and ask the chat wall: Are you now ready for today's episode of Animat's Crazy Cartoon Cast? And to keep this hype train going, are you ready here? Okay, let's see. Oh my God, JF, what the fridge are you doing? Okay, I know you're ready, but you shouldn't be that ready to eat your own ass, literally. <laughs> Okay, but wonderful to see. It looks like everybody is ready for this. And now, with that said and done, it is now time that we shall go and get things started. 
And with our first story that I have for you today, well, I'm just going to let you know now, considering that last week was American Thanksgiving, there wasn't necessarily a whole lot of uh, animation or animation related news to go and talk about. Except for this one. Considering that this was the latest animated feature that was released, things are not looking well for this picture, especially when it comes to the box office. Yes, specifically, I am talking about Disney's newest animated feature, Strange World. And um, originally, a lot of people were expecting that maybe it would do a little bit okay. Some people were predicting that during the five-day Thanksgiving weekend, it would go and make maybe around 30 million or even 40 million if it is lucky. But that is not the case whatsoever. And unfortunately, it looks like most people don't seem to care or were even aware about Strange World as it ultimately collected a total of $11.9 million on the regular three-day weekend and $18.6 million over the five-day holiday weekend. And uh, yeah, that's pretty bad so far. And already, it looks like Strange World is in a massive collision course to become a major box office bomb, down to the point that its theatrical run will end up costing Disney up to $100 million. In fact, to go into that specifics, I'm going to go and read you from my source here on, um, on Variety. As it states, unless its business rebounds dramatically in the next few weeks, and that it seems unlikely given the film's moderate reviews, lackluster audience reception, and minimal buzz, Sources estimate that Strange World will lose at least $100 million in its theatrical run. Even with proper attention on Disney Plus and home media platforms, box office experts suggest it'll be difficult to get the big budget film into the black. Since Strange World costs $180 million to produce and tens of millions more in global marketing and distribution fees, of course. The film needs to gross roughly $360 million to break even, sources say which already seems like an impossible record to go and reach, considering that not even uh, Lightyear has already... Uh, even Lightyear and Encanto, like, they only made, like, $226 million worldwide and $256 million worldwide, respectively. So, yeah, things have just not been going well, and chances are it's safe to say that... Uh, it's becoming a disaster for Disney. Like, things are not going well. They're not making their money for it. And it's been going pretty bad overall for, uh, for Strange World. Now, I think it is safe to say we all know why it didn't do well at the box office. Like, we might as well go and just say it up front that the reason why Strange World bombed at the box office was because of poor marketing because of the fact that Disney barely did anything, or at least compared to their previous animated features, even compared to the ones this year with Turning Red and Lightyear, they barely showed much presentation. Like, I'm not saying that there wasn't any advertisements for Strange World, but they did such a terrible job uh, to make people aware of Strange World's existence, or even to get people like engaged to say, come and go see this new Disney animated feature. They barely did much at all, especially when many people on social media were pretty much saying that they barely saw any advertisements. Many of them weren't even aware that this movie even existed until very close to like this, to, to the movie's release, or even just like, this month that it was their first time ever that they've heard of it. So I think it is safe to say that like, it's pretty much the marketing's fault why Strange World didn't necessarily do well. But with that said though, what I want to personally go and ask is why though? Not just why that it failed, but why did Disney not do much in the marketing? Why is it that it had this this much poor marketing why is it that disney was almost negligent to strange world and i did thought of that and i did nail down 
uh, a few specific reasons, many of which are actually very comparable to other Disney animated features of the past, whether they be recent or that they could go way back uh, a few decades prior. Now, the first thing that I want to go and immediately address, because I know this is going to be something that a lot of people are, are, are going to bring up, and this has even been brought up in this, uh, in this Variety article, and that is in regards to the LGBTQ plus themes. Now, I know there are a few people out there uh, that actually went and asked me on social media in regards to why was it that I didn't mention uh, the gay factor with uh, the character Ethan, considering that uh, the media would go and once again try to say that Disney had their first gay character, or in this case, their fir uh, Disney's first openly gay lead character uh, in one of their animated films. And I'm just going to go and get this out of the way. I think, honestly, the gay representation of Ethan is fine. I think it actually does work well with its character, considering that he is someone who's trying to go and find his own voice, that he doesn't want to be like his dad's searcher and run the farm. He wants to go and be himself. He wants to be, uh, you know, to, to have his own identity, to, to go and actually be an explorer, to, to have the confidence to actually be himself. And th that's really the biggest thing with Ethan is actually to have the confidence of being himself. And a part of that is to have the confidence to go and ask out his uh, crush, Diezo. So honestly, in terms of the gay factor, that was actually handled pretty well and pretty organically where it actually does help build the character to give us an idea of like, to, to know who he is, basically. Personally, I'm not like, uh, as I stated in my review, I'm not necessarily a big fan of the clades because of the whole father son dynamic, rather it be with either Jaeger and Searcher or with uh, Searcher and Ethan. Like it, it really is one of the weakest points of, of the film. But still, though, in terms of the LGBTQ plus representation, I think honestly, it, it's perfectly fine. Uh, even if it does seem a little bit strange that the like it feels like homophobia just doesn't exist that nobody is questioning it especially in this day and age when homophobia is just so rampant but anyways um uh, my point being uh like with, with that little opinion out of the way uh the thing is what seems to be pretty uh the thing is a lot of people are going to go and bring up the fact that the fact that ethan was gay might have played a significant factor as to why is it that this movie bombed and already uh, a lot of people are discussing about the possibility that disney might be using the gay factor as uh, a scapegoat as to why it bombed we're seeing a whole bunch of different videos that talk about the gay element and if it might have a connection with the failure of strange world and stuff like that and i'm just gonna go and state this right now maybe it is a factor into the current performance of strange world but i would not say that it is the main reason and especially right now considering that um the 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 the, the factor of lgbtq plus rights is becoming a massive hot button topic and now the discussions have increasingly been heated up to the point where they unfortunately are starting to become dangerous and this is especially the case with uh, what has recently happened with the uh, Colorado Springs shooting, where immediately afterwards, it looks like the far right, especially a lot of big name right wing influencers, such as uh, Tim Pool, Steven Crowder, Libs of TikTok, and uh, several others, even like the anti woke people like the Quartering, Geeks Plus Gamers, uh, Clownfish TV, and what have you, like pretty much they're taking their mask off and they're pretty much stating that they sided with the uh, like, like they pretty much side with the mass shooter that they have much more of a problem with people being gay instead of the fact that there was a mass shooter just uh taking away innocent lives and th pretty much they're unapologetically declaring a uh, genocide to the entire LGBTQ+ plus community like now it's at the point that it is becoming dangerous and the reason why I don't want to really go and discuss about the LGBTQ plus factor on Strange World is because I feel like that's just going to be a massively slippery slope 
into a completely different topic that really has nothing to do with Strange World, that it's actually more about LGBTQ plus rights. And then you're going to have all these anti-woke people barging in, trying to justify their homophobia and their violent nature. So honestly, as I said before, yes, I would say that it might be a little bit of a factor into this, but I would not say that it is the main reason and that we should not go and deeply look into it because then it would just put us into a rabbit hole where the discussion will no longer be about Strange World. Now, with that said, and now with that one out of the way, allow me to go and discuss about why I do think Strange World did turn out to be a flop. And why is it that Disney did not do much advertising onto Strange World? Especially when there actually has been some evidence and some testimonials from animators on social media where they did state that Disney just didn't really care about Strange World and that they decided to give them very little money on the marketing in the first place. And I think one of the first reasons, and I would have to go and point this out, actually, let me show you like one of the first reasons, it would be because of this movie. It's because of Lightyear. And the reason why I'm pointing out to Lightyear is because when you do think about it, Lightyear is a very similar feature to Strange World. They both were released in 2022 by Disney. They're both, and, and uh, they are both animated sci-fi films and they're both massive, like they both have a massive budget. And the thing is with Lightyear, oh, and not to mention that, there is also the similarity of the fact that there is a character of color who is a part of the LGBTQ plus community. So there are some strong similarities between Strange World and Lightyear. But the thing is, despite the fact that Lightyear, unlike Strange World, it got a whole bunch of major marketing. Like they were really hyping this up that it was going to be the, the next big Pixar film, that it was about to be as big as Toy Story. It was going to put Disney animation or at least Disney's animation team, like with Pixar included, put them back on the box office map, that it's going to make a billion dollars at the box office. But sadly, that did not happen, uh, unfortunately, due to several factors, factors in which I've already talked about in the past during the summer, uh, it didn't really work out and it ultimately became a box office flop. Now, keep in mind with all of this, I forgot to mention, but all these are theories, by the way, these are all just based on uh, an outsider's perspective like these are not like the legitimate factual reasons as to why it flops so keep in mind just keep uh take this with a little bit of a grain of salt so uh but the thing is at least from my perspective is that with Lightyear, considering that became a box office flop and how that is so similar to strange world it pretty much discouraged disney from investing in the uh marketing on this that they feel like if Lightyear became a flop, then Strange World will not really have a chance. Because at the very least, Lightyear does have that franchise connection to Toy Story. Strange World, on the other hand, is a completely original animated feature and doesn't necessarily have any, it doesn't necessarily have any familiarity for people to go and immediately jump into it other than the Disney name. So from there, uh, sadly... Uh, they, they just decided, okay, well, that one flopped. Then there's uh, no chance that this thing would work out. So we're just going to go and not, not invest in the marketing as much. Like, I guess you could say that the, market, the, the, the marketing budget was spent more on Lightyear than it was on Strange World. So that's my first theory as to why. Now, the second theory as uh, into this is because of Encanto. Now, I know it sounds weird to bring up Encanto, the last Disney animated feature before Strange World, but you you got to I do have to go and mention this because it really does put things into perspective when you do think about it because with Encanto, that movie technically was a box office flop as well. In fact, Disney has never had a box office hit with their animated films, whether it be from Disney Animation or from Pixar, since Frozen 2. 
So already we are witnessing three years of a bit of a Disney slash Pixar animation box office drought. And there has yet to have one that actually did work at the box office. But on Disney Plus, on the other hand, they have been great hits. And again, going back into Encanto, you got to keep in mind, technically at the box office, it was a flop. Like when it was released last year in American Thanksgiving 2021, not many people were really talking about the feature. It wasn't until it was released on Disney Plus that it became a massive phenomenon. That's when it was the number one animated feature people were talking about. It was the movie that like everybody, like it was the animated movie that everyone was enjoying at the time. We Don't Talk About Bruno immediately became one of, if not the biggest Disney song that was just breaking records, even more so than stuff like Let It Go and even Can You Feel the Love Tonight? So it was because of Disney Plus that it became a massive hit. And I would argue the same thing with the other Pixar films that was released on Disney Plus exclusively, such as Soul, Luca, and even this year's Turning Red. So chances are, with what Disney has witnessed uh, with Turning Red, with Lightyear, and especially with Encanto, there is a chance that they're not go they don't want to go and invest into the marketing for the movie on the big screen, but rather they're just waiting for this film to be on Disney Plus and that is how they would go and get their money back. That's how people are going to go and actually watch the animated feature. Because we have yet to see a Disney or Pixar animated film that has been successful at the box office ever since the entire COVID pandemic. Right now, Disney, Disney doesn't have anything proven yet that uh, they're able to go and make money with their animated films just from the box office alone. In fact, I do believe that it has actually been proven that, uh, or I, I think it has been confirmed that when it comes to Strange World, it's immediately gonna go onto Disney Plus pretty soon, where just before Christmas, like one month after, after its release on December 23rd, they're going to go and actually put it out for free on Disney Plus, just like what happened with Encanto. If I'm wrong on that, uh, you can go and say it right now. Like you could go and confirm to me in the chat wall if that actually is the case. But it does make sense because Di like for now, Disney doesn't seem to fully have faith in the box office when it comes to their animated films. Like, yeah, with their Marvel movies, yeah, they're definitely confident with it but not yet with their animated works. And so far, their big moneymaker with animation is just on Disney+. Plus. And I think really they're just waiting until it does get released on Disney+, Plus in order to go and make their money back. But nowadays, however, it seems pretty unlikely. I mean, even Lightyear didn't make it to the, like, the phenomenon levels of like Encanto or even turning red, which, yeah, it is a, a, an unfair comparison, but just being dependent on Disney Plus, I don't think it really is going to work out. And either way, it's not going to go and uh, make its money. Now, at this point, I want to go and have a, a quick commercial break right now. But when we do come back, uh, I will go and give out one more explanation. And this is going to be the one that would really go and... Uh, really present the big picture as to what's going on with uh, Strange World and as to why it became a, a box office flop and why Disney didn't give it as much marketing. So uh, we will be right back and we will be discussing a little bit more about this. Okay, so we are back. And uh, as I was saying, I do have... One more theory that I would like to go and discuss as to the failure of Strange World. And really, when you step back into the big picture, you have to go and realize not just Strange World, not just with what's been happening this year with both Lightyear and Strange World, but it really is because of the fact that Disney never had any good luck with uh, sci-fi movies in general, even when looking back into their history, 
sci-fi and Disney usually doesn't mix, or at the very least, it doesn't mix in terms of the box office. And it's been very rare that it actually did work out financially for them. Because I'm not just talking about Lightyear or Strange World, but even going back to the two movies that Strange World has been compared to the most, and yes, even I have done so, Atlantis The Lost Empire and Treasure Planet, especially Treasure Planet. In fact, um, you know, the funny thing about it is that I saw someone on Twitter actually summarized it perfectly of how similar Strange World and Treasure Planet is. Much more so than you may think, because keep in mind, this is a Disney animated film that is a major sci-fi adventure. And on top of that, the lead character has some serious daddy issues. And of course, one of the, co uh, one of the comic reliefs is just a little abstract blob. So yeah, who knew that Strange Who knew that Strange World is actually a spiritual successor to Treasure Planet? <laughs> and not to mention that, well, it's often been agreed that it's not one of Disney's best movies. Like, not 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 bad at all, but definitely one of the weaker ones in their library. <laughs> okay, but in all seriousness though, the big thing with uh Atlantis the Lost Empire and with uh Tre Treasure Planet is that they both were very much the same thing with uh Strange World where they were a lot more adventurous, they were a lot more experimental. Like Disney was going beyond what they were normally doing with their uh with their traditional animated musicals and financially it did not pay off. Like quite literally it didn't pay off. In fact, Treasure Planet uh, went on to become one of Disney's biggest box office bombs. In fact, beforehand, it was the biggest uh, anima animated box office bomb from Disney before Strange World, or at least in the Disney Animation Library. And keep in mind, this doesn't just limit to Disney animation. Like, even in general, when Disney puts out an animated movie, uh, not just an animated movie, but like just a movie in general that is sci-fi themed, they usually end up becoming a box office bomb. Mars Needs Moms, for example, that is, so far, it is the biggest animated box office bomb of all time, much more so than Strange World. And it was so catastrophic that it ended up shutting down Image Movers Digital. Like, it just destroyed an entire animation studio with how bad it went at the box office. And then, of course, there were the live-action movies, such as uh, 2012's John Carter, or even Brad Bird's Tomorrowland. Those were sci-fi movies as well, and they really did not do well at the box office. I th And I tried looking back, and the only ones that really were successful for Disney in terms of sci-fi movies like maybe there's Lilo and Stitch like I don't know if people would really count this as a full-on sci-fi movie like the sci-fi is not as prominent as say uh, Treasure Planet or even in Strange World but I guess you could say with the El with the aliens and with Stitch and stuff like that there is some sci-fi to it but it's not as prominent and then of course there was Tron. Now, those were not big box office hits, but they were still successful that did manage to turn a profit. And especially nowadays, uh, Tron has become a massive cult favorite. It's so far one of Disney's biggest and most successful sci-fi brands that they have in their collection. But my point being is that they never really had much success with sci-fi in the first place. And thus, when the marketers and when and when the people yeah, at Disney, yeah. uh, oh well, <laughs> uh, fa oh, thank you for the uh, extra subscription there. Um, and uh, with that said, as I was saying, with the fact that they saw that Disney was once again making another sci-fi movie, well, that oh, and uh, oh, someone also brought up Wally. Oh yeah, that okay, yeah. Uh, okay, so it, it it sounds like people are really bringing up. Uh, okay, there there's a lot more that I, I'm forgetting. Also, Meet the Robinsons. I mean, I guess that's another sci-fi movie. I get like, yeah, that is another sci-fi movie, but that wasn't really as successful. Like, I don't I don't think it was a box office flop, but it certainly wasn't a big hit for Disney. 
And someone else also brought up, um, so someone brought up Wally as well. Okay, that is another example of Disney uh, having a, a pretty good hit, of course. Uh, and then, um, okay, I would not count Big Hero 6, though. I understand where you're going with it, but Big Hero 6 is much more of a superhero movie, more so than it is a uh, sci-fi movie. It would be like saying that Iron Man is sci-fi. Technically, yes, but it's much more in the superhero genre, more so than it is uh, in the sci-fi genre. And I know some people are even bringing up like, oh, but what about like Guardians of the Galaxy or what about Star Wars? Okay, anything that is attached to like the big franchise yeah! titles, they don't necessarily count. And uh, thank you, Scout, for the uh, subscription too. Uh, but oh, no, oh, it's actually gifts right there. Oh, wow. Okay, very generous of you. But yeah, I, uh, as I was saying, the, yeah! the thing is, like, I know there are some examples of some successes and there have been a lot of examples that are flops. But my point being is that generally Disney has more bad luck with sci-fi. Like they usually come out as flops more so than they would come out as hits. So I'm sure it was probably discouraging to hear that Disney animation wanted to make another sci-fi movie, which is why they were pretty hesitant to go and really market the crap out of this movie. And also, oh, wow, I almost forgot about another reason, actually, like speaking of Disney, speaking of their marketing and stuff like that, there is one thing that I do have to state, and that is the fact that even though Strange World is inevitably going to be a box office flop, and I do feel sorry for the movie, I don't really feel sorry for Disney, though. And the reason why is because, well, you know they're still going to make their money anyways, especially with Black Panther and with the upcoming Avatar The Way of Water. Those are so far two of the most anticipated movies at the end of the year. And I mean, Black Panther was already released and so far it's been doing extremely well. In fact, it is so far the most successful or probably the only successful movie during Thanksgiving. And keep in mind that um, a lot of people are even saying that this has been one of the worst box office results during Thanksgiving in uh, box office history. So it's not just Strange World that's suffering, but a, a lot of the films that have been released during this time uh, have suffered as well. Like, yeah, at, at the very least with Strange World, some people are talking about it, but People aren't really mentioning or people are completely forgetting about the Fablemans. Like that movie is also suffering as well. But either way, though, um, back to what I was talking about, like so far, it feels like Disney is putting a lot more of their marketing energy on the two movies that they know they are going to be major hits because they are very anticipated sequels. Like people have waited for years for these for these movies to come out. And that's especially the case with Black Panther, Wakanda Forever, because a lot because many people do want to see that Chadwick Boseman tribute. And then, of course, you got Avatar The Way of Water, which people have waited about 13 years uh, for that movie to actually be released and to go and wait to see the grand return of um, one of James Cameron's or pretty much James Cameron's biggest movie and one of the biggest movies in the world. Like they know, like Disney knows very well that even though they're not going to make their money back with Strange World, they will make it back, however, with those two feature films. So that's why they're putting a lot more energy onto them instead of Strange World itself. But either way, regardless of what the reason may be, like rather it be because of what happened to Lightyear, because of the fact that they don't have much, uh, they don't have a movie that has been successful or they don't have an animated movie that has been successful at the box office ever since uh, the pandemic started. And uh, then there's also the factor of Black Panther, uh, Wakanda Forever and Avatar The Way of Water that, that those two are getting a lot more attention than Strange World. And also the fact that Disney sci-fi movies are more likely flops more so than they are hits. It's a combining factor as to why we aren't really seeing much, um, much advertisement for Strange World. And honestly, 
it really does suck. I, I, like, I, I will admit, it's not necessarily my favorite Disney movie. And, I, I, you know, and I, I've stated before in my review that I do find this to technically be the weakest Disney movie that we've had, or at least the weakest Disney animated movie that we've had in recent years. But does it deserve that treatment? Absolutely not. Honestly, like as it is, it's still fine. It's still a solid movie as is. And there's still a lot of great factors into it. I've already mentioned about how the LGBTQ plus themes in there are pretty genuine. And uh, the animation is, of course, it's absolutely stunning. Uh, the action is pretty intense and it's actually uh, pretty engaging. Like it definitely grabbed my attention. And there was that twist at the end that honestly, uh, more so than any other Disney film so far, or at least the recent ones, it has the best twist out there. Like, honestly, it was something that I did not expect and definitely did change up my view on uh, the movie. I think it was honestly well built, uh, at least on that front. But it still sucks that um, it, it, it unfortunately met that fate. And who knows, uh, like considering that, it did met the same fate as Atlantis and Treasure Planet on their initial release. Maybe in uh, maybe in a couple of decades from now, we'll see this be back into popularity and it will be considered uh, a cult favorite that people will become nostalgic for uh, Strange World and people will end up loving it all over again, kind of like with what we are seeing right now with Treasure Planet. Who knows? So yeah, honestly, I just wanted to go and express my whole thoughts on the matter. I know it's quite a mouthful, but there really is a lot to go and discuss about what happened here. All right, so with that said, I'd like to go into the chat wall, and I would like to ask you all, what did you all think about the fact that Strange World is going to be a massive flop, losing millions of dollars, even more than $100 million dollars? Uh, and what do you think could be the reason why it didn't get much marketing? Let me know what you think on this. Okay, so uh, uh, let's see what we got here. Honestly, I, bl uh, I think I blame Bob Chapek's way of marketing animated films for Strange World's poor performance. As for the whole LGBTQ plus thing, screw the far right for their homophobic views. I don't think Ethan being gay is a major factor in his box office performance, but I just got to get this off my chest. I hate the far right for reasons like this. Oh, yeah, especially when they are becoming extremists and basically being a part of the far right has become uh, a synonym for being a violent criminal now, especially with the, uh, with how they're supporting the uh, far, especially with how they're uh, supporting the conservative mass shooter uh, at Colorado Springs. Uh, let's see now. Um, I'm not going to act like Strange World was a great movie. It was probably Disney's weakest since Frozen 2. But even at that, I don't think it deserved to be a bomb on this caliber. I, for one, blame the lack of marketing put onto the film because I'll admit, at one point, I almost forgot it was releasing until the second trailer came out. But I think the biggest damage the film caused was to Jabuki Young White's back for having to carry the whole movie. Oh, dang. Now that, I gotta say, is an interesting take right there. Oh, man, that, that I gotta give you, that's pretty interesting. I would argue it's more the animators who carry the whole picture, but okay, that, that I gotta say, like, honestly, I, like, it's an interesting take, and I could see where you're going with it. I could definitely see where you're going with it. Uh, let's see now. Uh, 20 years ago, Tre Treasure Planet released, uh, to be the biggest Disney animation bomb in the box office. 20 years later, Strange World came in and might lose more money than Treasure Planet. I read an article that Strange World got bad test screenings, but they put it into theaters so that they don't get backlash from the LGBTQ plus community, animation team, and movie theater owners, even if they were, uh, even if they will get their money back from Wakanda Forever and Funny Smurfs whatever water people. I hope Elemental and Wish uh, get better treatment. <laughs> wow, I never, I never saw that be described i never saw avatar be described as funny smurfs water people i think i'm gonna go with I, I think i'm actually gonna go into the movie theater like in december i'm just gonna go and ask yeah one ticket to funny smurfs water people please <laughs> oh my god beautiful man beautiful name right there i love it okay let's see what we got here Disney and sci-fi never seem to work together with how many times Disney's sci-fi movie bombs at the box office. 
Uh, another reason to why Strange World Bomb I want to bring up is the fact that it was released between Black Panther Wakanda Forever and Avatar The Way of Water, which I did bring up. Um, uh, as both of them are sequels to two very successful movies, I can only hope that this movie will be more successful on Disney+, Plus. By, but I acknowledge that's really a small chance. Yeah, I, I honestly don't think so. I mean, let's be honest. Um, I don't, like, at least for me, I don't think it's ever going to be in the popularity caliber as Encanto, or at least for now. Maybe it will in a few decades later, but... For now, I don't think it's really going to be that popular per se. So I don't know. Like, I'm sure like a lot of like people will give it attention, but I, I don't know if it's really going to be that big. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Uh, what other? OK, um, no one expected Strange World to underperform or do worse than Lightyear, but it did. Uh, it is all due to the lack of marketing. The sci-fi concept itself was difficult to sell. The story itself wasn't good along with the characters. The Disney Plus factor. FIFA World Cup, if you count that. And former head Bob Chapek just doesn't care. That's why, uh, and even Universal is, uh, dominating with their animated films at the box office this year with Illumination and DreamWorks making more money than Disney. Yeah, that is unfortunately true. Like, even with, um... Even with like uh, the bad guys, for example, it didn't like it didn't do big numbers at the box office, but it did manage to turn a profit for Universal. And I'm just going to say right now, I think even Puss in Boots might even do the same. I think it could actually pull off a sing where it's not going to make it at number one at the box office, but it will find a way to get younger audiences to go and check that movie out and to make its money from there. So honestly, uh, yeah, it, it, like that that is another factor that is interesting to bring up. And yeah, like Universal and DreamWorks are definitely dominating more at the box office this year. But it, it's unfortunate to see this happen. All right. I think I'm going to read two more comments before we jump into the uh, next story. Let's see. Honestly, I feel really sorry for Strange World right now. I'm not surprised that the film flopped between the lack of marketing, the subpar reviews, the sci-fi aspect, and even Disney putting more focus on Black Panther, Wakanda Forever, and Avatar The Way of Water. It just, hurt, uh, it just hurts the film in the long run. However, if we should blame someone on this failure, can we blame Bob Chapek and call it a day? Well, I mean, if it really is uh, Bob Chapek that you want to blame, well, I mean, especially in recent years with uh, the big replacement that pretty much made uh, Chapek go... Uh then I don't see why not that he should be blamed on that. <laughs> All right, uh, let's see. One more we go. Okay, I, I think I'll go with this one. This sounds interesting. What, wor uh, what worries me the most about Strange World being a box office flop is what it means for the future of original animation in theaters. At this point, we can no longer just say it's the pandemic that's hurting these animated films and their box office runs anymore. Minions The Rise of Gru proves that families will go see an animated film in theaters despite the, pa the pandemic, but now it can only be just IP slash franchise based films that they will go out and see. And that's not even a full guarantee. Honestly, I feel like that is a completely different subject altogether, but it is a good point to go and discuss. Like maybe like, yeah, you could be right. Maybe it is the factor that it is an original animated film and that it's not based on a popular IP. That could actually be something. All right, so with that said, I think that really is enough uh, discussion about that. And um, actually, uh, considering that we did bring up this movie quite often, our next story will actually be more related to that feature film. So uh, with all that said and done, we will be right back and we will go and talk about our next story. All right, so moving on to our next story. Speaking of Avatar The Way of Water, considering that we have discussed about that quite often during our talk with Strange World, that is actually going to be the subject of our next story. Considering that quite recently they did put out a brand new trailer. Now, I know that I did skip on the uh, main trailer, like the first big trailer that was released before 
Uh, but, well, that was because back then there were plenty of other discussions that needed to be had. But this time around, considering that things have been pretty open, uh, pretty open in terms of this week of what to go and uh, talk about, or at least uh, there hasn't been a whole lot to go and find to actually have a discussion about. I figured why the fridge not? And uh, let's actually talk about that one here, considering there has been some interesting updates in regards to it. So with that said, let's go ahead and check out the trailer or what is called on its YouTube channel, the new trailer for the upcoming anticipated sequel, Funny Smurf Water People, or as others call it, Avatar. Thank you, announcer. I was not expecting that. <laughs> All right, and that indeed was Avatar The Way of Water, to which the movie will be coming soon, uh, in a few weeks actually, on December 16th. And I might as well go and start this off by getting this out of the way, but say what you will about uh, The Way of Water. Say, say what you may think. Like, yeah. It's like, may or, or like, say what you will about the first Avatar. Maybe you're not a fan of it. Maybe you just don't really care or you think it's just way too overhyped or anything. But I got to say with what we have seen in the trailer, my God, does it look amazing. Like the visuals. Oh, yeah. They nailed it beautifully in here. Like, th this is going to be, th like, there's no denying that this is going to be a visual spectacle. And you could tell that there has been so much resources put into it and that the technology was really perfected to really immerse us and to transport us into uh, this new section of Pandora, especially going underwater, explore like, exploring all the different sea life. And really, uh, and not to mention like the world building, the world building, like to really expand upon Avatar and look into this new water section. In fact, uh, like it, it feels like with this trailer, they're kind of introducing us to uh, like this new water area in Pandora, like with these uh, water themed navis in there. In fact, it, it, it does look like there kind of is like a bit of a distinct difference. Like you see like, oh yeah, with this one, oh my God. <laughs> like, you, 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 know, you know, that's also another funny thing with this one. It's like, yeah, now they're, now they're really, uh, they're really putting up the sexiness onto, uh, on, onto some of the Na'vi characters, especially this one. I mean, like, okay, I, now before people are, are gonna tell me to go to horny jail, I mean, come on, like this was on purpose. Like, l l let's just back this up a bit. This was on purpose here. Like all, like you got all these guys checking this girl out and she's just like showing off like, hey, sup boys. <laughs> like, come on. That, like, come on. I see what you're doing here. But, but, but you can tell that there is a difference uh, compared, like with these avatar characters compared to um, the ones that we are familiar with from the 2009 movie, how uh, their skins, you know, uh, their skin is a lot more turquoise. Uh, their eyes are definitely blue instead of yellow that, you know, now we're exploring like different races of Na'vi. Like they're still the same, of course, but, you know, they have a bit of a different variant. Like this one is a lot more aquatic, that they're more water experts and that they're showing uh, some of the characters what is, uh, well, I guess you could say, uh, the way of water. And not to mention that even in this trailer, like they, they showed a lot more action in the first trailer, but in this one as well, like you can see a bit in the end where they show that there is indeed going to be like a lot of action and that there is that war between the humans with their high tech and with the Navi, like they, they do promise us like a lot of that major action, but of course there's going to be uh, more water action as well. And also one thing I, I got to give it credit for is seeing all the different um, creatures in there, like 
seeing all the new different aquatic features because that's one of the more admirable traits in avatar like especially with the world building is seeing all the different uh not just inhabitants but all the different species that you could find within pandora and now we are going to explore a lot more of that and see like what is the uh aquatic life within pandora and i think that is actually going to be pretty cool that's going to help with the immersiveness and that is really going to get us and get you know at least help us get engaged with the movie but then there is the one problem with the first avatar film that looks like it's still going to continue on in this feature what the fridge is the story because i don't know about you but i don't know if i really got much of an idea of what is the story here in avatar the way of water because at the most it looks like it's telling us that I, what I think it's the main characters now they have like you know the main characters from the first movie now they're starting a family and they got to move out from their old place because something is happening in there and now they got to they got to live in the water section of Pandora and that's where they're gonna have to live their life but then again it looks like the same narratives and the same themes are going on with the big war of people versus the Navi and stuff like that so I, I don't know, like still, even after all these different trailers and what we're experiencing, it, it's it's going to be a bit of a hard sell for me. I don't know if it's really going to have that much of an engaging story for me to go and be willing to watch this. Not to mention the fact that it has been stated that this movie will be three hours long. So if it has the power to keep my attention for three hours... That I really don't know. And especially with the story quality of the first feature, if it's going to transcend onto this movie as well, it's, I don't know, it's going to be difficult to try to grab my attention for so long, especially for someone like me who is generally used to mo to watching movies an hour and a half or two hours at a time. That's going, you know, honestly, that I feel like is going to be a major a, a major challenge. And it is a major challenge for movies in general that if they go beyond two hours or especially go beyond two and a half hours, then they got to make sure that they can entertain their audience and not make the time feel like a liability and make it more of an asset so that they could really spend time with what they're experiencing on the big screen. That's going to be probably the biggest challenge of this feature film or actually no i wouldn't say that because the real biggest challenge of this feature is to go and make money because recently uh james cameron actually said something insane and that is in order for the way of water to turn a profit it needs to be the third or fourth highest grossing film of all time that apparently there was so much money that's been spent on the way of water that the only way that it could make its money back is if it would make over $2 billion. And um, I got my source here on IGN uh, in which it states right over here, uh, Cameron told GQ in a recent interview that the way of water was very effing expensive to make. Uh, though he didn't share an exact figure to support or refute claims that the production budget was around $250 million. He did, however, refer to the movie as the worst business case in movie history before revealing uh, that the long-awaited sequel would need to rank highly in the global box office charts just to break even. You have to be third or fourth highest grossing film in history, Cameron said about turning a profit on the movie. That's your threshold. That's your break even. And yes, it has to be over $2 billion, considering that the top five highest grossing movies of all time have all surpassed that number, including the first Avatar, uh, Avengers Endgame, Titanic, Star Wars The Force Awakens, and uh, and yeah. Oh, and uh, I do believe uh, Avengers Inf Infinity War as well. So yeah, all of these have already made over $2 billion, and... In order for The Way of Water to make money, it has to make $2 billion. Which honestly, that sounds crazy. And I don't know about you, but I don't really know if that is actually going to be possible. Now, granted, I know for a fact 
that Avatar The Way of Water is going to be a big hit at the box office. It's definitely going to make a lot of money. It, I, I think it's got, like, I'll say right now, it is a fact that it will make more than a billion dollars at the box office. And honestly, I would even say that I think it's highly likely that it would even surpass Top Gun Maverick to be the highest grossing movie of 2022. I think that's, I think like, that's going to be a guarantee. And even with the Top Gun uh, thing, that's like almost a guarantee. But for this movie to make over $2 billion, that's going to be extremely difficult to imagine. That I feel like it's going to be massively iffy. And even I question the capabilities of Avatar The Way of Water, especially with the fact that it's going to be a three hour long movie that the first Avatar doesn't necessarily have that much of a great reputation. It, it, it's, I don't know. I just feel like in the current position that it is right now, it's going to be tough to imagine with all these different factors that it could even make over $2 billion. That really is a massive ask. And especially with the fact that to say that, oh, it needs to be the third or fourth highest grossing movie just to break even, that honestly feels like a massive mismanagement issue. And that honestly could be something that could bite Disney in the butt if things don't actually work well with Avatar The Way of Water. And especially they really need to go and set things up. Like I remember there was a video by Double Toasted. They actually brought it up perfectly that cinemas really need to go and do so much for The Way of Water in order for that to be a hit. Especially with the fact that, again, it's a three hour movie. So by so like by the days, maybe it won't sell as much tickets, considering that it takes more, you know, that screenings take more time for it than your average movie. Like, uh, for example, with strange, you know, like with Strange World, you'll be able to sell more tickets on a daily basis because it's like about an hour and a half or like cool, like less than two hours. But with The Way of Water, the fact that it is three hours long, that means less tickets are going to be able to be sold on a daily basis. Or even just maintaining the movie uh, to have it stay on the big screen. Like, that is another massive ask as well. Like, it, like, it needs to go and repeat what uh, the first Avatar did and just stay there for literally months on end. Because I remember... Uh, back in like 2009 and 2010 when the first Avatar was released like I remember like it stayed there until like March or even April and that you have to hold on to like the whole media releases and even the Disney Plus release you gotta wait until like maybe sometime like next year as of right now like until September or even October who the fridge knows but you gotta wait a very long time and you got to make sure that it really does rank up its money. There's like a lot to go and ask for. But overall, though, I got to say with the trailer, I mean, it definitely looks cool. But as a three hour movie, I don't know if it's really going to be something that it would sell me to go and to go and check this out. Like, I don't care how many like I, I don't care how many hot navvies you're gonna go and sell me i don't know if it's really gonna be a lot for me to go and actually to, to you know to have me willingly go but i'm just gonna state this right now honestly i would not be surprised if during the holidays i do end up actually watching this movie and the reason why it's not out of my own will but i'm just gonna this is just between us but i have a feeling that my family really wants to go so just as like a fun little family activity you know with mother father and son that will probably go and just watch avatar the way of water as some sort of activity and i mean i can't really say no to them you know just to have you know so like to have some nice family time and nowadays it is rare that i would go and go and watch a movie on the big screen with my parents you know it's a you know it's nice family quality time that i can't really say no to not because i want to see the way of water but it's mostly you know to have some quality time with them so that could be something that could happen i don't know if it will happen but i wouldn't be surprised if it does all right so um with that said though i would like to go into the chat wall and i would like to ask you all what do you think 
about this trailer of Avatar The Way of Water. Do you think it's enough to go and convince you to watch it on the big screen? And do you think that it would be able to surpass $2 billion at the box office? Let me know what you think on that. Let's see now. Um, personally, I've always been indifferent towards Avatar. While the visuals are gorgeous, the story is just meh. And with this sequel, it could probably be more of the same, both with the beautiful uh, with the beautiful visuals and the not that interesting story. So overall, we'll see what happens. And this is kind of making me wonder if this will keep people invested to the point where people will come back for the other three upcoming sequels coming out throughout the 2020 decade. Ah, uh, yes, that will honestly be very interesting because I think I did remember uh, James Cameron or someone mentioned that if things don't go well with The Way of Water, then they do have a backup plan that apparently they're going to do exactly like Fantastic Beasts and that um, if things don't go well with number two, then the third movie will indeed be the last and they're just going to scrap number four and they're going to scrap number five. Apparently, that seems to be the plan right now with what they want to do with uh, Avatar. That, or at the very least, that is the backup plan. But I don't know. We, we, we'll see what happens, though. We will see. Uh, let's see now. Uh, oh, my God. What the freak? Why is everybody doing their own? Like, I'm just seeing people making, like, memes of the title. Like, what the freak is happening here? Space Jam, The Way of the Jam. Rugrats, The Way of Babies. What the what Wonder Park, the way of wonder, Pixar Road to CG. What the fridge is happening? What the fridge is going on with my with the chat wall? <laughs> what the fridge? It's like, what is happening? I'm not expecting the memes to go on. <laughs> okay. I didn't know this is a thing. Uh, Wally the way the way of by and large. Oh my god. Okay, anyways, um, uh back onto this. From the looks of the trailer, I still have a good feeling that this will be an all-action world-building and visual spectacle, but a very little story, not to mention that I feel like they're rehashing the first film, except now it's uh, Jake Sully now learning the way of water. Get it? Uh, I predict that it will be a hit for sure, but not a $2 billion hit, so I'm not sure James Cameron will get that promise given its $350-$400 million production budget. Well, at least that's what rumors say. I don't know if there's a confirmation to that. I'll see it, but I don't expect a three-hour film to be good. Uh, let's see now. Uh, I never, I've never been an Avatar guy, unless you mean that Nickelodeon show, which is awesome. Oh, yeah, I'm definitely an Avatar guy, too, in that front. Uh, and yeah, this didn't change my mind. Don't get me wrong, the visuals are absolutely amazing, but it feels like the film's going to be less about immersive storytelling and more focused on pure spectacle. I'll likely check it out if nothing else is showing, but I guess you could say that one Navi will, wait for it, make everyone wet, make everyone wet for her. Play me off, Paul! <laughs> uh, fudge, oh, I don't, actually, you know what? Here, I'm just gonna, uh, this is the closest that I have for like some kind of outro like that. I must apologize. That must be sad, though. Imagine you make a pun and then you say, play me off, dude. And then that plays. That must be sad. <laughs> I'm sorry about that, JF. Oh, boy. Scoop. Oh, my God. More people are going. More memes are happening. Scoop. The way of Simon Cowell. Elemental. The way of go with the flow guy. Oh, my God. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let's see what else we got here. Uh, what other comments do we have? Um... Uh, let's see now. Uh, for the visuals, this was going to be one of the most gorgeous visuals I've ever seen. The design of the creatures, the Navi and Pandora itself are just incredible. And you can clearly see how much work and money they put into it. I would easily watch this movie for just visuals alone. As for the story, uh, human bad, tall blue, native people good. Science loses, nature wins. That's the plot, right? Oh, and uh, holy macaroni, that's a big budget. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah, maybe that's where the but maybe that's where Strange World's marketing budget went. It went on to making Avatar the Way of Water. Like, 
This is what you want to know what happened to Strange Worlds marketing? It went on this. This is what happened. This is where it went. That woman sucked out all the marketing budget of Strange World just so she could exist and just flaunt around going, hello, boys. <laughs> all right, I'm going to read one more comment before we move on to the next story. Uh, where the fridge who, uh, who has a good comment here? Okay, uh, I'll go with this one. I'm going to say the movie will be great for the blue and beautiful visuals uh, that make it more of an underwater attraction at a theme park. The story may be weak and the CG character designs are not uh, are not uh, impressive, especially the hot female avatar or hottest blue realistic smurf. Uh, this is more of the improved CG version of Mars Needs Mom. Ah, uh, well, so... Uh, with that said, though, well, <laughs> I think we pretty much got our entire sci-fi fill out of the way. And uh, for our next story, uh, we will go into something more animated. And it will be something quick, but I can guarantee you it is something cool. Ah, you are back. Well, for our next story, um, you know what? I don't necessarily have uh, an introduction to this story. Instead of telling you what it is, well, allow me to show you what our next story is. There was the brand new logo for DreamWorks Animation, and that is going to be the subject of today. In fact, there's actually an entire article on The Hollywood Reporter that actually discussed in length about this uh, brand new logo with the update of uh, who is now called the Moon Child. And uh, by the way, the article here really is worth reading. It is called DreamWorks Animation unveils, excuse me, unveils its new curtain raiser introduced, uh, introduces reimagined Moon Child. So basically what we have witnessed, or at least uh, for those of you who are just listening, what it is here is the brand new intro, like basically the brand new logo that says that what you are watching is a DreamWorks animation movie. And instead of the kid just fishing on the moon, what it is is that the child is now like traveling through different galaxies with, uh, with their moon and meeting up with other popular DreamWorks characters. And in the uh, logo that we just saw, uh, they met up with... Uh, with the bad guys, with Poe from Kung Fu Panda, with uh, uh, Toothless from How to Train Your Dragon, with uh, the Boss Baby, with Poppy from Trolls, and then finally meeting up right at the end with uh, Shrek, Donkey, and Fiona, up until uh, they would go up to the moon and then just do their little fishing bit. So that's basically the whole thing with uh, what they have presented there. And technically... It has already made its debut recently on uh, the early screening of Puss in Boots The Last Wish. You may recall that on Saturday, uh, Universal has decided to do a public early screening where for one time only before its official release on December 21st, uh, they would go and show everyone Puss in Boots The Last Wish, which by the way, uh, little spoilers for my review, but I don't know if this is going to be a hot take or not. I find that movie to actually be better than The Bad Guys. Not to say that The Bad Guys was bad. I still really like that movie, but Puss in Boots? Holy crap. It is something special. If you haven't seen it yet, you're going to be in for a hell of a surprise when that's going to be coming out during the holidays. Like, oh my God, it really is that good. Uh, but yeah, with this new uh, title though, with this new intro... Um, and with this article here, it really does go in depth, uh, including talking to Margie Khan, the president of DreamWorks Animation, along with the production designer who did lead the project, uh, Kendall Cronkite, uh, in which uh, they stated here, we make, uh, we make dreams come to life on screen. So the idea was basically that you go into the dreams of a new child, that they are taking you, uh, they are taking you through this dreamscape and reintroducing you to these iconic figures that we've created over all these years. The child is surfing, floating, and flying through these kinds of galaxies and bringing all those very different looking uh, film characters together in one piece. And also, I know that before a lot of people 
would call it the moon kid or the moon boy. Uh, but now they have officially given the character the title of the moon child. And yes, I guess you could say that uh, beforehand uh, they were called moon boy. But now the kid has actually transitioned into becoming non-binary. It is official. Uh, moon child has come out as a non-binary. So good for them. <laughs> you know, good for them on their new identity. And it is actually a an official thing. Uh, and they even uh, brought it up over here. Uh, it's right over here. Yeah, it's uh, actually brought up by uh, Margie Khan, where uh, it describes here, throughout the process, viewers are guided by what Cronkite disguise, uh, dis uh, describes as a magical reimagining of the DreamWorks human silhouette that sits on a crescent moon. Uh, long known as the Moon Boy, it has been redubbed the Moon Child, with the team telling The Hollywood Reporter they stripped out all kinds of genders uh, of gender specific things from the original model so that the silhouette could be more widely represented, uh, representing the studio's fans and young dreamers. We love the idea that we now have a moon child, not necessarily a moon boy, because we wanted the child to be appealing to everyone, says uh, Bergie, uh, which uh, I don't know if they mentioned the name. Oh, it's apparently the uh, producer Suzanne Ber uh, Bergie. I think that's how you say her name. Uh, there's also a quote here from Margie Khan. At the studio, we like to say all dreamers are welcome here. And when you think about who is the iconic dreamer, it's that moon child. People wish upon stars. People look up to the sky, uh, sky for inspiration. Having them come to the moon and surf through the sky, visiting new familiar friends, you set uh, the stage for the entertainment to come. And also... One significant thing that they have mentioned with this new introduction is that it can be interchangeable. Now, we have seen many times in the past with many different DreamWorks films where they've done many different variants and many different updates to the Moon Child logo, where they did many different variants that are based on the movie that they are watching. And they are going to do a little bit of that as well, not necessarily themed to the movie, but they did state that they will be changing some of the characters within the uh, within the logo that you have seen. In fact, um, it was uh, right, oh, where where did they say that? This is a big article, by the way. I mean, th this is something that is a guarantee that it will take much longer to read this than it is to watch the uh, the the logo itself. Uh, but they did state uh, right over here. Throughout its history, the studio has toyed with both standardized iterations of the curtain raiser, think of uh, the focus on the balloons versus the lure, and custom variants that ran before films like B-Movie, Madagascar 2, Shark Tale, Monsters vs. Aliens, and Megamind. Now the plan is to combine those approaches with the studio sticking to the dream palette, but leaving room to change with titles and characters that are featured in the biome. All minus maybe Shrek, says Cron uh, Cronkite, are, re are replaceable and could change as soon as 2023, according to Khan. If we uh, open another movie with these characters, we don't necessarily want to repeat the characters that will be in the next film. If indeed that's what happens, so we've made it so that we're uh, that they're plug and play. You can literally pull one out and put a new character from one of our beloved franchises in place of another. So that's pretty much uh, a good summary of the whole thing that's going on with the moon child. And I did get to experience that on the big screen when I saw the early viewing of uh, Puss in Boots, The Last Wish. And honestly, from what I've seen or from what we've all seen now with uh, with this, it's actually really, really cool. And uh, honestly, it feels very nice to see something that actually honors its legacy. And not to mention that it's kind of a coincidence as well, considering that uh, DreamWorks is not the only one that had a new logo show up. Uh, Disney has also done so with their new logo, uh, with uh, not not just like for Disney animation, but just for Disney in general. And I mean, that one, I just got to say, this is not to say that Strange World was bad, but that lo that Disney logo was one of the best things about that movie. Just seeing that new logo on the big screen, crystal clear, and with the music everywhere, it's just so beautiful. Like, it really does feel like the theme that a wish has come true with that one. 
And with uh, what we have seen with the DreamWorks one, that is honestly very cool. Like as an animation fan myself, I feel like it's actually awesome to see something that really does honor uh, the entire legacy and actually having another chance to see these characters again on the big screen, like the ones that you never thought you would see them again, or you think that they have officially retired, like especially at the end when we have seen uh, Shrek, like when we have seen Shrek, Fiona, and Donkey, you know, there is a part of me that feels like it is cool that we actually do see them again after all these years on the big screen. Like we haven't done, like we haven't done so since Shrek Forever After. I mean, yeah, Shrek kind of ended off on a low note with uh, Shrek the Third and Forever After, but you know, seeing you know, there's kind of like this this sense of like nostalgia, this sense you know, this sense of happiness to actually see Shrek again, but now a part of like the logo, you know, that's actually pretty cool. But one thing I will say that is actually the most awesome part is the fact that the characters can actually be interchangeable. Like it's not necessarily set in stone that it's all these characters that will remain in there, like with uh, with the bad guys or the boss baby or uh, trolls or how to train your dragon or whatever that they can actually go and change up and put in other characters. And I think that's actually going to be something that at the very least will actually be exciting, that, that will actually be exciting whenever there is a new DreamWorks movie that will come out, regardless of what it may be. Even if it's something that like not many people are that hyped up for, like let's say a Boss Baby 3, for example, at the very least people will be excited to see what are going to be the characters that will show up in the logo this time? Like now it's going to be like a bit of a guessing game. And in a way, it's going to be like a bit of a, a mini Smash Bros. Ultimate kind of feeling where people are going to put on their guesses. It's like, OK, the new DreamWorks film is going to be coming up. Who are we going to see in the logo right now? Because one thing I could guarantee you, they did state that. For their franchise movies, they're not going to go and repeat the character that will be on the uh, logo and then you'll see them throughout the entire movie. Like, they will be changing that. And we will be seeing that soon, considering that the next DreamWorks movies are indeed going to be franchise movies. I believe the next DreamWorks film is actually going to be uh, the third Trolls movie. So you know that for next time, they will be switching up Poppy and they might replace her with something else. And uh, the same thing can be said with the one afterwards, which is going to be uh, Kung Fu Panda 4, I believe. Like, you know, Poe is not going to be there, so they have to go and replace him. And it's all going to be a big guessing game of who they're going to go and switch up. And I think, honestly, there are going to be some obvious guesses as to who's going to be next. Because I can say right now that it's obvious that not all the big name DreamWorks franchises are represented here. Like, one that is obviously missing is the Madagascar crew. Like, I know at some point, one of the changes that will be a high priority that they do have to do will be to include Alex, Marty, Melman, and Gloria. Like, at some point, they need to go and show up. Or maybe it's just, like, uh, the Penguins, for example. Maybe it's going to be them. Or another one, for example, would be Puss in Boots. Maybe Puss will have his own, like, maybe he will have his own. Or... I could even say that uh, maybe they'll truly do a, sh a full on Shrek homage and maybe the next time we will actually see Puss be featured with uh, Shrek, Fiona and Donkey or maybe even like like it's not just Puss but like maybe even Puss and Kitty Softpaws as well like they could go and do that um man but then uh, like honestly I'm thinking if there are other big name franchises but uh Maybe not. Uh, I don't know. Like maybe like I'm thinking maybe another one could be like Captain Underpants, for example, like instead of uh, seeing Toothless flying around that we would see Captain Underpants flying or another one. And I know there's going to be a lot of people that they're thinking which ones they would like to see. But I think uh, DreamWorks would be the kind of company that they would go and deliver on the fan favorites as well. Like another one that I'm pretty confident we will see again Megamind. Considering how Megamind has become a viral meme where it's thanks to those memes where Megamind has pretty much become uh, debatably equally as popular as Gru himself, I think from there, like at some point we will see Megamind in that logo along with his minion as well. So I think there's going to be uh, that. Uh, I think Megamind will show up. 
And then there's another one. Like, I remember I talked with a friend uh, about this and they brought up that. I, and I think I will agree with them. Maybe we will see, of course, Barry B. Benson of the B movie. That's another one in which caused a massive viral meme, a, ma a viral sensation, I would even add. I wouldn't be surprised if they will acknowledge the memes and they will even bring up uh, they, they will bring up Barry B. Benson onto this. So I think that's going to be another one. But I will admit, though, I personally do have uh, some of my personal uh, recommendations. Like some of my, well, not personal recommendations, but kind of like I do have a want list of characters that I do want to see uh, in the logo as well, just to see them come back. Like one, for example, and this is one that I just thought up right now, Rise of the Guardians. I would love to see the uh, I would love to see Rise of the Guardians come back and actually have like some of the characters like rather it be Jack Frost or 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 maybe the entire Guardians team that they would have a return. That would actually be really cool. I mean, considering that even though that movie flopped, uh it did become pretty popular later on. I, I guess you could say it became a bit of a sleeper hit. And that's not, and that's not mentioning, uh, uh, that's not mentioning it as a pun with the Sandman or whatever. But I, I, I think honestly that could be another viable option. But if there were, if, if there is just one character or group of characters that I want to see the most, and I don't know if they would do this, I want to see Tulio and Miguel. I will legit want to see the comeback of Tulio and Miguel from the Road to El Dorado. Just have a quick moment in that intro now i don't know if it would be possible because like it would be i don't know it would be weird to see like hand-drawn characters in this entire cg world but that would be amazing to see like to see the reunion of tulio and miguel on the big screen that would be amazing that's my one wish in all this uh, I, I, honestly like i don't know if they could do that i don't know if they would be interested in doing so but again considering how tulio and miguel became you know they pretty much became viral uh after like long after the movie was released like that would be a major thing i want to see that's my most wanted characters to see in the dream in the dreamworks logo have tulio and miguel in there it doesn't matter what the movie would be i will give it the animat seal of approval on whatever movie it's on because they bring back tulio and miguel <laughs> uh, but yeah overall though i gotta say uh this new logo here honestly really cool i love how it pays homage to the uh you know i i love how it pays homage to the entire legacy of DreamWorks animation. As an animation fan, it makes me feel excited about DreamWorks all over again. And especially after this year, with such bangers of mo uh, of movies, such as uh, The Bad Guys, and with uh, Puss in Boots, The Last Wish. Honestly, it, it, you know, it feels great to see DreamWorks uh, coming back and giving us some new, exciting content. Uh, of course, beyond of what they've already done on Netflix, but to see them making new big name movies and just be excited to see what they got all over again. So, and, and especially with, uh, with this new logo, it really is the cherry on top. All right, so uh, with that said and done, I would like to go into the chat wall and I want to know what you all think about the new DreamWorks logo. Are you guys impressed? Did you guys like the new logo? And do you have a DreamWorks character that you would like to see appear in the logo one day? Okay, uh, let's see. I can't describe how much I love this new intro. Not only did it showcase a lot of the good films DreamWorks made over the years, both old and new, but they also brought back the Shrek meme for the first two logos. Uh, also, the fact that they're going to change the characters in every movie so it doesn't get repetitive sounds like a good idea. Overall, I dig it, and I'm looking forward to seeing this in front of the new DreamWorks movies in the near future. Well, I mean, you will in the very near future because that one is actually going to go and start off with uh, Puss and Boots The Last Wish. Uh, let's see what else we got. Uh, is everyone doing new logos? First, Disney, now DreamWorks. I mean, don't get me wrong. I love the new logo, and I especially love the idea of changing up the characters every now and again. But I'm a sucker for companies honoring their history, especially when they bring up their not-so-brightest moments in their history. But still, uh, this is something everyone is doing now. Uh, even I think about Warner Brothers cha uh, changed up their intro logo too, but I digress. 
still, I do hope to see, that we do see Tulio and Miguel and Megamind sometime. Yeah, that is true. I mean, like, I know it sounds weird that I'm really hyping things up and really talking in length about a new intro, but I think it's safe to say recently, like, little intros like this, they are worth remembering. They are worth talking about because sometimes they can be a big part of our childhood. I mean, I don't know if you guys have seen the new Defunct Land video. All like it, it, it was pretty much 90 minutes all dedicated to the four notes that play during the bumpers of the Disney Channel. But it's like with those little things, they are worth looking into. They are worth discussing about. They are worth highlighting like what they have done and stuff like that. You know, they are worth, you know, they are worth like admiring. And especially with this one, I do admire what uh, Ken uh, Kendall Cronkite and apparently a team of just 12 animators working on this in a span of uh, eight months. I do believe that's what they have mentioned here. Yeah, uh, it says right. Yeah, it actually does uh, say right here. In all, the curtain raiser took around eight months to complete and was made by a team of 10 to 12 people with upwards of 40 separate hands collaborating, consulting, and contributing. That group was led by DreamWorks veterans with literally decades of experience between them, Bergy, Cronkite, and visual, uh, visual effects supervisor Matt Baer, who worked with Mike Troll to figure out the technical elements of swapping biomes in and out, among other things. So yeah, honestly, they definitely do deserve credit they do deserve the admiration and they do deserve the praise uh, let's see well i only just got accustomed to the new logo that made its debut with uh hidden world uh this is a pretty cool intro while the inclusion of boss baby is a little jarring i was half expecting him to shout out watch my second movie on weed it's the best i love how they incorporate their most prominent icon except b movie all in all, I look forward to seeing this when when I see Puss in Boots, but who cares? We got a new Mario movie trailer tomorrow. Woo! Oh, okay. Yeah, I actually did see that. Like after the like um during the break, there was a lot of people hyping up. Like, oh my god, the, the new Mario movie is coming out tomorrow. The, the Mario movie trailer is coming out tomorrow. So I think it is safe to say that on the next episode of Animax Crazy Cartoon Cast, we will definitely be talking about that one. Oh, uh, let's see. Yeah, and by the way, I just want to state, like, I know it seems weird to see the boss baby in this, but then again, um, I don't know if that's going to last. Like, depending on how Alec Baldwin's reputation is going to be, if it's going to end up becoming worse, I wouldn't be surprised if DreamWorks decided... All right, baby, let's go and uh, switch things up. All right, make a mind here. You, we'll, we'll put you over here. Don't ask questions. All right, uh, let's see. What else do we have here? So DreamWorks Animation has a brand new visual identity, and it looks absolutely stunning. Not only did they bring back the fanfare that millions of people from the 2000s and 2010s grew up with in a grander way, but the fact that the logo shows different DreamWorks characters in each new film adds a lot more variety. Really excited to see the logo on the big screen when Puss in Boots The Last Wish lands in theaters. Also, fun fact, this 32-second logo took eight months to create. Yep, I did mention that. Uh, let's see. Uh, hot damn! That was an awesome logo. The animation and visuals were quite beautiful. And not only did we get to see a lot of characters from DreamWorks movies, but the fact that they will change it for every movie makes me so excited to see which character will be appearing in each movie. As for me, I would love to see Moses, the Penguins, uh, and Spirit. Also, I want to bring out some news that was announced recently, which is that we are getting a second Mario movie trailer tomorrow. All right, all right. Uh, let's see. I'm definitely excited for Puss in Boots 2 and this logo. So amazing and, uh, oh, it looks so amazing. And making the Moonchild non-binary is a good idea. So we can ev evade ourselves as the Moonchild and picture... Uh, of the other a man uh, or oh picture it as either a man or a woman if we choose if we so choose plus i uh plus glad that puss in boots 2 he's copying the animation style from into the spider-verse great choice and hope they will stick with that style for the rest of the series dreamworks simbad voiced by brad pitt don't forget him okay so i think you're suggesting uh you you want to have you want to see brad pitt <laughs> or or you want to see simbad in there all right so two more comments before we move on to the next story uh, I saw Puss in Boots The Last Wish through an early screening before it comes out next month, and it is the best of the best Shrek-related movies since Shrek 2 and the best DreamWorks movie that has done since the Dragons films. 
uh for the new dreamers logo sure it has the marvel studios vibe but it is really cool including seeing old characters like shrek for example including red's the rendition music theme too can't wait to see the other dreamworks characters that might appear in the future dreamworks movies all right i have a lot of respect for the majority of the 3d dreamworks movies aside boss aside of boss baby and trolls but my great big gripe with this is that the 30 second short is uh, is basically the studio saying we only care about 3d movies my reply to this short is what about your 2d movies what happened to tulio sinbad spirit or moses did they exist at some point i know that dreamworks did start with ants in 1998 but they did make those 2d gems of animated animation they shouldn't forget about them yeah and uh, by the way i'm just gonna say for now that when it comes to sinbad uh, well not sinbad when it comes to uh spirit i don't know if you guys would want to have him back because they're not gonna bring back spirit stallion of the cimarron they're gonna bring back the 3d spirit you know, the one that, that, you know, the one that's on the Netflix show with the little girls and the one that had the Untamed movie. If they would bring Spirit back, it would be that Spirit. So I'm just letting you know. All right, so that was definitely a nice intro. And we will be back with our next story in, thi in which things, uh, well, it's going to be a lot more horrific. So uh, stay tuned for that one because now we're going to enter into the crazy realm. Okay, so moving on to our next story, we're going to go and discuss about a newly announced horror movie. Oh, but don't you worry, there is a little bit of an animation connection right over here. Now, as you probably have witnessed, we are seeing a little bit of a trend going on, a bit of a Five Nights at Freddy's trend, where you take many childhood classic elements and you turn that into a horror movie. And one of the more anticipated ones of that is an upcoming horror feature, excuse me, is just um, my stomach not cooperating with me and just feeling the need to go and burp a little more. But um, as I was saying, the thing is, is that now, uh, yeah, as I was saying, uh, yes, Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey, that is uh, right now uh, one of the more anticipated horror movies going on. But, you know, there is a, a bit of a funny thing when it comes to these horror features in the first place. Because the thing is, when it comes to those uh, sadistic horror fans, well, okay, not, not all horror fans are sadistic, but those who do enjoy horror movies, sometimes when they do see blood, some will be disgusted about it, but some actually see that as a little symphony. You know, seeing blood being gushed out is like music to their ears. And when they would go see a horror movie, when they see a slasher movie, for example, where blood is just coming out everywhere, well, let's just say, blood is a song that never ends. Yes, folks, what we have here is a brand new horror movie based on Bambi. Yes, you heard me right. We're going to have a brand new horror movie based on Bambi. And some people are even saying Bambi, the way of blood. No, 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 no. That is not the title. It is actually going to be called Bambi the Reckoning. And I'm going to say right now, yes, folks, this movie is exactly what you think it is. Although um, it hasn't officially started in terms of production. In fact, they say that January of next year, uh, the film crew is actually going to go and begin making this movie. But the plot is exactly what you go and think, because uh, the summary so far is that it is a revenge story where Bambi's mother has died because of uh, hunters and stuff like that. So Bambi decided he's going to go on a blood filled rampage where he wants to go and take down one by one the hunters who have taken down Bambi's mother. That's basically the quick summary of what this is going to be about. And uh, also, speaking of Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey, uh, the people who are making that are actually going to be in charge of making this new movie, uh, which is going to be brought to us by ITN Studios and Jagged Edge Productions. Even the director of, the, of Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey, uh, Rice Frake Waterfield will be in charge of uh, will will be in charge as a producer, and uh, B movie filmmaker jo Scott Jeffrey will be the uh, director of the movie. 
In fact, uh, Scott Jeffrey actually says here, reading from my source on Dread Central, the film will be an incredibly dark retelling of the 1928 story we all know and love, finding inspiration from the designs we use in Netflix, uh, from the designs used in Netflix The Ritual, Bambi will be a vicious killing machine that lurks in the wilderness. Prepare for Bambi on rabies. And for now, we don't necessarily have any updates in regards to Bambi the Reckoning. We don't know who's going to be in the cast. We don't even have a release date. But for now, what we do know is that there is indeed going to be a horror movie based on Bambi. And uh, there is one more thing I would like to go and point out because I've seen some people mention on social media that apparently this is a clear sign that Disney is losing in the copyright war. Uh, in the copyright war. That apparently now the rights to all their properties are starting to really disintegrate. Kind of like if Thanos just did his snap and now copyright laws that apply to Disney are suddenly disappearing. And I just want to confirm right now, no, that is not the case, actually. Uh, even though this is based on Bambi, uh, this isn't actually going to be based on Bambi the Disney movie. One thing you have to keep in mind is that the Disney film is actually based on an original book that was released back in 1928. And according to copyright laws, considering that right now it's been officially 94 years since the official book, that means the book right now is actually a part of royalty free. And that is just in regards to the English version, by the way. Uh, back in, uh, keep in mind that the original book that started it all, it was released in Austria back in 1923. So already, uh, the copyright was pretty much free on Bambi. It's just that, well, nowadays when you think of Bambi, of course you think of the, uh, of the Disney version. Not many people would go and discuss about the original book. So that's just one thing I want to go and clarify. The reason why these people are able to go and actually use Bambi as a subject for a horror movie, it's because now Bambi, the book version, is royalty-free. And one thing I will state, honestly, when it comes to seeing this idea or, like, hearing that this has been announced, honestly, I'm not really that impressed immediately. Like, the subject alone, like, just on the basis that uh, we're having a Bambi-themed horror movie, Honestly, I feel like this is just something that's like, eh, especially with the narrative, especially like with the whole plot line that this is going to be like a revenge story, because let's be honest, we've heard of this countless of times before. We've heard it so many times and so many different parodies of Bambi having his own little revenge story of trying to get, you know, trying to take down the hunters who took down his mother. And I mean, we've seen this all the time, like on social media, on YouTube, and especially like different parodies. Like Saturday Night Live has already done that. Like I remember when they were parodying live action remakes, for example, uh, like they want they they did a joke about a live action remake of Bambi with Dwayne The Rock Johnson as Bambi. And I think they even had uh, Kevin Hart as Thumper, for example. So already in there, like, they, honestly, I don't think this is something in which the premise alone can actually go and sell. Like, you have to go and do something a little bit more special if you really want to go and make some kind of Bambi-themed horror movie. Because especially, like, if it's just, like, if, if you're just going to go with the narrative of, oh, woodland creatures are going to go and attack the people, like, that's not really that original. It doesn't matter. Unless you're going to go and do something really special with the different animals like if you're going to bring in like flower and thumper for example where like in this version flower is actually like a honey badger and honey badger don't care they're going to go in they're like honey badger is, is just going to go and take down the people or like if you're going to take uh thumper for example and you're just going to turn him like one of the rabbits in the rayman games where like they like people see a cute little bunny and you're just going to see like uh, you're, you're just going to see thumper holding up a knife going bah! Like, at that point, okay, maybe you might have something. Like, if you're going to play up the comedy, maybe that could be an idea. But just on the basis of a generic, campy slasher movie with cute little woodland animals as the killers, I don't think that's really going to sell. But I will give this credit for one thing. And I think this is actually something that could actually turn things around 
with this uh, Bambi. And that is mentioning the idea about Netflix's The Ritual, where they stated that they were actually inspired by the designs of The Ritual. Now, I know some of you watching this maybe don't actually know what I am talking about, but you will see what I mean uh, with uh, what they are discussing about. And maybe, just maybe, this Bambi will look something like this. Now, what you are seeing here, apparently, this is the monster that actually showed up in, uh, in uh, the ritual. And as you could see, this, this isn't any ordinary deer. This is like a really messed up monster, like more monster-like features. Like, yeah, you got the antlers, but apparently the face is actually an entire human body and stuff like that. Now, at that point, if you're going to go and make Bambi like this, maybe you do have something. Maybe there could be some kind of potential. Now, granted, uh, based on what I've seen in the trailer of Pooh, Blood, and Honey, it's hard to really imagine if they would really have the budget to make some kind of creature of this caliber. But if you're going to tell me that your idea of this horror-themed revenge story of Bambi would require Bambi to go and become this, like, horrendous monster, like, something that came out of hell, like, Bambi decided to go and summon a demon in order to get his revenge, okay, then we may have something. Maybe at that point, we could really go and explore, like, maybe there's this deep, dark lore within the forest. Maybe this is like a forest that Satan himself has actually crafted. Maybe there is some legitimate potential here. I think there is a val- Like, honestly, if you're going in that direction, that will go and spice things up with your concept. Because again, the idea alone about- Bambi wanting his revenge, that's not going to be enough. Everybody has already done so in the past. But if you could go and actually include some demonic monsters, you know, just put Satan onto this thing or like put something from hell onto it. Now you're talking. Now you're going to go and make things a little bit more interesting and not to mention a lot more crazy. Like you're coming in watching like, uh, you, you know, you're watching like a Bambi theme horror movie, but then you get a whole bunch of chaos. Now that is going to be a lot more fun and is going to be a lot more memorable. But with that said, I don't know if that's actually going to be the direction. It's just based on the idea that they did brought up in regards with the uh, with the ritual. So ultimately, we will have to wait and see. Maybe this is going to work. Maybe this won't. But hey, who knows? Uh, but if they can find a way to make it a lot of fun and make it very creative, then maybe there could be some potential. But we won't know until maybe like 2024 or even beyond. So far, this thing has just been announced. And maybe they'll do something cool with it. But ultimately... We will see. All right, so with that said and done, I would like to go into the chat wall over here, and I want to ask you all, what do you think about a Bambi-themed horror movie? What do you think about Bambi the Reckoning? Are you guys into that idea? Would you be down to go and check that out? Let me know what you all think about this. All right, uh, let's see. What do we got here? Any comments? Oh, boy. <laughs> the answer is no, actually. Okay, okay. They're starting to come in. All right, let's see. This idea is just weird. Personally, I get why they would go ahead and take these classic stories and turn them into horror movies. I feel like we've heard this story before, but I feel like they would change the design and make it more horrifying. It could work. Also, speak speaking of horror, they just released the trailer for the Grinch horror movie, and it looks interesting. Oh, I know. <laughs> and there's something that I need to say about that. <sighs> Uh, let's see. I can't, I, I can't even man, uh, I can't even manage to bring out a little energy to care about this Bambi horror movie because with how many times people have done this concept of turning something cute into something scary has been done nowadays. I'm just tired to see it over and over again. However, if they do make Bambi look anything like the monster from the ritual, then maybe I could care for it if only for the design. All right, fair enough. Uh, let's see. I didn't expect Bambi would end up becoming a horror film, but they are doing it right now. I don't know what this will be, uh, uh, this will be about, but I'll give it a wait and see. I do wonder how bloody Bambi's mom's death would be 
if they presented some, uh, if they presented it in a gruesome manner. Oh yeah, I think honestly, like I can imagine, it's just gonna be like an entire field of blood, and there's not even gonna be a mother there. Like she's just disintegrated. There's just gonna be bones. Like that's it, just red and bones. I think that's what's gonna happen to her. Uh, let's see. I think it's interesting. I'll wait to see which way they go. If they went into the full-on black comedy route, then that would be brilliant. If they just go full horror, probably not. Also, speaking of cute gone horrific, Blood and Honey is getting a theatrical release. Well, that's definitely interesting right there. I think I'm going to read uh, one more comment before we move on to the grand finale. I can't speak for everyone, but I've grown rather... Oh, oh no, 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 no. Uh, I can't speak for everyone, but I've grown rather tired with the novelty of things we've enjoyed in our childhood used for horror material. The horror genre, in my view, is in a creative slump, and ideas like these aren't helping. Also, that giant demon deer from The Ritual is one of the most metal things I have ever seen. Oh yeah, like honestly, if I didn't know better, it looks like a metal album cover. Now, I will state right now, originally... Originally, I was about to end things right here, but then there was one mo one update. There was apparently one news minutes before starting this podcast that actually showed up, and I knew that I just have to talk about it, and it feels like a perfect segue after what we have just discussed. So stay tuned for the grand finale, folks. <laughs> And now, folks, this is it. We are about to go and cap this off with the one and only... Grand Finale! And one thing I do have to say, it's funny how I saw a lot of people were trying to figure out what this Grand Finale would be. And I just gotta say, I'm honestly very surprised to hear that apparently Legendary has signed a deal with Sony Pictures. That's not the one, because honestly, that's the first time I've heard about it, and I'm honestly really surprised. Maybe I'll talk about that last, uh, I'll talk about that next week, but, uh, okay. Well, did not expect that to hear, but what I mean specifically is actually this story that I have over here. One that was just recently announced, minutes before the podcast actually began, and I figured, you know what, I've already talked about the horror-themed Bambi movie, I might as well go and include this one as well. So with that said, let us go ahead and check out the trailer for another childhood turn into a horror movie thing, in which in this case, it shall be the mean one. Remember that story about Cindy you know who? When her Christmas was stolen, she knew what to do. Why Santa Claus? Why? But what if I said that's not how it went down? Monster! You gonna be okay? Because we can turn around right now. No. That poor girl. Her mother was killed in mind snake. Did you ever find the Christmas killer? I never got a reliable description of the man. go through another Christmas killer thing. Not again. Us folks down in Newville, we liked Christmas a lot. But that thing that lives just north of Newville does not. What is it? The mean one. He's slippery, he's elusive. He's a mean one, that mister. I'm not gonna be a victim anymore. Time to roast this beast. <laughs> You're a dead one, mister. And that is the mean one, which is the Christmas horror parody of Grinch, in which that is actually going to be coming out in theaters um, very soon on December 9th. So yeah, apparently that's going to be a thing. And also they even mentioned... Uh, some familiar names. In fact, uh, horror movie fans who have recently watched Terrifier 2, in which uh, they were probably scared of the performance and uh, 
the the terrifying nature of David Howard Thornton. Apparently, he's going to be back and he will be playing the Grinch of this movie. Like, uh, and yeah, and here you have like a here you have a pretty good view of what he looks like right over here. And in fact, we even got a poster of what this movie is uh, of uh, of this entire feature film. So yeah, apparently this is going to this is going to be a thing. And keep in mind, this is honestly my first time that I just saw this. Like I didn't have time to actually research it a little bit to go and check it out. I literally just saw a link and says, "Oh, okay, that's the thing. Time to put it over here." <sighs> yeah, so this was honestly my first experience watching it, and I think I've discussed about this before in this podcast. But um, yeah, now actually seeing it in the flesh, now seeing it in movement and what it could, what it's going to be. Yeah, this is uh, this is kind of interesting, but I will say there are some things about it that I do find funny with the way that they're really tongue in cheek with the way that they're just not saying the Grinch, because the thing is, unlike Bambi and unlike Winnie the Pooh, the Grinch is not part of royalty free. Like that still has been like that thing is still trademarked and copyrighted by the Dr. Seuss Enterprise. So they can't actually go and say, oh, we have the Grinch right here. You know, they can't say that, oh, it's the Grinch and he's about to kill us. They can't do that. And the thing is, it's funny how you hear in the trailer. It's like whenever they're about to say the Grinch, they can't actually. But I think they've already mentioned before, based on um, what I've previously heard about, they are actually going to change the name. And I think they're just going to call him the Grump. So instead of the Grinch going around, they're just going to have the Grump going around. Uh, but yeah, honestly, looking at this, though, I don't know if this is intentional or not, but honestly, I feel like the one word to best describe this is that this is very campy in all the right and wrong ways. Like one thing I do appreciate is that there is a little bit of that self-awareness that they know that they're being this Grinch themed horror movie and they're just really playing it up stupidly. Uh, but then again, there's also elements that like you do get a lot of the bad stuff from um, from from like these campy style horror movies. And I got to say some of the acting here. Oh, boy, it's bad. <laughs> like, especially the little girl at the beginning. Like, oh my god, it doesn't be, it's like, it sounds like she's just reading her lines, like right over here. Stolen. She knew what to do. Why, Santa Claus? Why? <laughs> Why, Santa Claus? Why'd you do it? <laughs> I mean, what do you see, like, if you see Santa stealing your Christmas tree, you're not gonna go in with the enthusiasm of like, bruh, like, what you doing, man? Bruh, like, wh wh what the hell? Like, what, what are you doing? Like, why? Come on, man. That that ain't cool. Put put that crap back. Come on, man. You, you should know better. Put put it back. Okay. Don't don't be stealing Christmas. All right. You, you're supposed to put in presents. Don't do that. You're not gonna do. You're not gonna be like that. Like what the fridge is that enthusiasm? <laughs> like I'm sorry, but that that's that's just bad. But then there's also like the grown up version of Cindy. You know who? Which I honestly I feel like. Kill you know, she ain't any better either. Thing, not again. Us folks down in Newville, we liked Christmas a lot. Uh, hold on. Good night. Time to roast this beast. <laughs> yeah, even her, it's like, mm, I don't know. <laughs> not necessarily the best, not necessarily the best actress. I wouldn't need, I, I, honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if, uh, or, or maybe it is, I don't know. Like, I was about to say, like, no, like, you know, this doesn't sound like a union project, but then again, I mean, they have David Howard Thornton and I mean, he already made himself a big deal in Terrifier too. So I, I just don't know, honestly, in that front, it's like, are these union actors? Because they certainly don't sound like union actors. But then again, I'm not going to say all the actors are bad because there are some that again, that they are campy as well, but they are the fun kind of campy, especially like the, uh, like the Alan Moore looking guy. Like that dude is funny. Does not. What is it? The mean one. He's slippery. He's elusive. He's a mean one, that mister. <laughs> He's a mean one, that mister. Ding. <laughs> like, okay, that is funny. So honestly, like, with what we have experienced, like, it's pretty much promising us like exactly what we would get. Like one thing that I will give it credit is that at the very least, like 
it's a guarantee that it will be delivering on what it would go and promise. And that is Grinch style violence that you're going to have the Grinch who's going to go and kill people one on uh, one by one in Newville instead of Whoville, you know, they got to make sure like they can't actually say the things, but say the thing that rhymes so that it kind of sounds that way. But um, like, at least they're going to go and deliver it on that. But I think honestly, like, similarly to the to the different uh iterations of grinch you know just like with boris karloff jim carrey and benedict cumberbatch i think really what it all boils down to is how the performance of the grinch himself is going to be how is david Hort uh david howard thornton will be as the grinch because let's be honest a big reason why we watch those specials and movies is because is because of the grinch character and if David Howard Thornton can bring out like that kind of manic energy that everybody loved with the Jim Carrey version, then maybe this could legitimately be worthwhile, like have like a crazy horror version of, of the Grinch. And if that character can actually be a lot of fun, then honestly, I think this movie could legitimately be worthwhile. But one thing that is turning me off a little bit in this uh, in this trailer is that it feels like it's focusing so much more on the people more so than they legitimately are on the Grinch himself. That it looks like they're going to be focusing on the people, that they're focusing more on Cindy, you know who. Uh, and at that point, it just, I don't, I don't know. Like, if they if it's really going to be about those people with that kind of, like, low-level acting, then I don't know if it's really going to be that much of an enjoyable, campy movie, but... If they if they could really but if there can actually be more time for the Grinch, like if they're saving up all those Grinch moments in, in the movie and that we do see a lot of it, then it will be a good time. Like, honestly, I do see the potential with this movie that if it can be more dedicated to the Grinch adaptation, if it is more about the Grinch more so than the people and we see him do all these different killings on, on the people of Newville, then I can see th then I can see where it can actually be a lot of fun, where it can legitimately be worthwhile. But if it's going to be a lot more of your standard horror flick in which the killer just so happens to be the Grinch, then I don't know if it really will be that worthwhile. But I'm going to stay right now. Honestly, if I'm able to, if I can then honestly, I think this could make a, a legitimately good Animat Watches over here. I know it's been a long time since I've done so, but if I can find, if there is a way that I can watch this before Christmas, then I think uh, we're going to be in for something really fun. And uh, if you are interested, by the way, in checking out The Mean One, then keep in mind that it will be coming out in selected theaters, or I presume, like, it will be selected theaters. It will be coming out on uh december 9th all right so with that said now i would like to go into the chat wall and i want to ask you what do you think about what you have seen with this trailer of the mean one are you excited to go and check this movie out are you a little bit more hesitant about this or after our discussion with bambi are you just sick and tired of hearing this child childhood themes turn into horror movies L let me know what you think Uh, let's see now. The trailer of the mean one has this terrifier quality into this, and it looks like it's going to be mediocre. I get they are trying to make the Grinch a horror movie with uh, Grinch slash mean one to be a serial killer with a campy tone, but it's going to be mediocre overall. By the way, David Howard Thornton, uh, as in Arch the Clown himself, playing the Grinch? Holy crap, I have seen the Terrifier films and they are bloody as F, so seeing him playing as the mean one... I'm down for it just for him only. Exactly. And that's why I do see the potential with this movie because apparently uh, David Howard Thornton, like he was he was stated to be incredible as Art the Clown that apparently some people would even say that he is scarier than Pennywise the Clown. And if he can bring that kind of violent, manic and threatening energy onto the grump, or onto the mean one, or the Grinch, or whatever the fridge he's gonna, or whatever the fridge they're gonna call it, then honestly, they could have something. They could have potential, and this could actually be a movie that could be worth watching. Uh, let's see now. The trailer looks interesting. Personally, while the acting is not that good, 
I think it could work as a horror movie and deliver what people want. And it could be an MST3K style where we can riff and make fun of how campy it is. So overall, we'll see what happens. Oh yeah. I mean, regardless of how it is, good or bad, I know this has some legitimate Animat Watches material, and hopefully I'll be able to have one done before Christmas time. Uh, let's see, what else do we have here? Um, oh, this trailer looks in- uh, no, wait, no, I, I just- what the- <laughs> sorry. Uh, the hell did I just watch? Who asked for this scum? A Grinch horror movie sounds painfully dumb. How is Evil Bambi just second place compared to the Susian Yuletide disgrace? This entire film looks like shite, 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 shite. And I do not like it. Not one little bit. Or not little, little bite. Oh, boy. Oh, I see where you're going with that comment. Very clever of you, man. Very clever. From one childhood horror movie to another, and honestly, I'm too tired to even care about it. Maybe this could be fun with how bad it is, but I have zero interest in this movie. I'll skip this harder than how Dark Souls is hard. There you go. And I think with that said, though, I'll read one more comment just in case. I knew it. Grinch is going to have a horror parody movie. Hope, to, uh, hope distance from Dr. Seuss. Uh, hope distance from Dr. Seuss. Even before this, Dr. Seuss's widow did not let Universal to make something scary and horror to Seuss Landing for Halloween Horror Nights 2002 and 2003. All right. Well, then, with that said and done... I believe that should do it for this episode of Animat. Things are gonna get crazy. That's not what I wanted to do. Wrong button. Sorry about that, folks. That's it for today's episode of Animat's Crazy Cartoon Cast. All right, so already you can tell that it sounds like it's going to be a pretty exciting episode, especially with the Mario trailer that is going to be coming soon. And uh, hopefully you will join me next time for more fun-filled times in Animax Crazy Cartoon Cast. And by the way, don't forget to go and subscribe to me on Twitch and on YouTube and to go and follow me on whatever podcast services you're listening to. So with all that said and done, thank you all so much for listening. Thank you all so much for watching. And until next time, see you later, dudes.